Hi, my name is Graham and I live in southern Michigan and my wife and I just finished building uh, our, our new home and our home has some passive solar designs incorporated into it. You can see here that it's winter time, it's the middle of January and it's probably only like maybe 15 or 16 degrees out but it's sunny and when it's sunny it really warms our house up. You can see all the glass behind me because that is the uh, south wall of our house and the sun shines in through all the windows and warms our house up in the winter time. Um, we put all of our windows on that side of the house and we'll show you in this video kind of how we laid it out so that when we're in the house in the living spaces we, we kind of spend our time in the sunshine. So another cool thing about the passive solar design is that uh, the sun shines into our windows only in the sum, uh, only in the winter time, not in the summertime, because the path of the sun in the winter time is so low you can see that it's shining completely inside of our windows. Uh, in the summertime the path of the sun is going to be much higher and so we actually have these, these little eyebrows and these little shades that go over the windows so in the summertime when the sun comes up uh, it won't shine in our windows. So now I'm over on the north side of the house and you can see that there are almost no windows on the north side of the house. In fact the only things that we have windows for on the north side of the house is the bathrooms and we located all the bathrooms at the, the north side of the house for that particular reason because they don't need large windows just maybe a tiny little bathroom window so you can see there's absolutely no sunshine that, that comes out of the north side of the house and so windows themselves are very inefficient at insulating a house so we try to keep those at a minimum everywhere except for the south side where we actually get some gain. Um, this winter, uh, let's see, winter of 2010, the December was very cold and we just got our, um, our heat bills back and it was uh, $65 for the whole month and in Michigan for a cold December that's, that's quite a bit less than most people would pay for heat. So uh, not only are we saving resources by, by constructing a house this way, we're also saving a lot of money. Our utilities this last month was under $100. So on top of uh, building some solar, passive solar designs into our house, we also made it really uh, energy efficient so that it would store the heat inside. So the first thing that we did was we made an airlock. So the breezeway between the garage and the house actually acts as an airlock because we have a door here and then we have another door that goes into the house, so that way when we open the door, we don't have a big rush of cold air that goes in the house, or in the summertime, a big rush of warm air that goes in the house. So I'm on the first floor of our house in the kitchen, and what we did inside of the house is we moved all of our, our active living spaces on the south side, so that way during the day, we would get light, and then when it's sunny, a lot of sunshine. So it's really pleasant to be here in the sunshine. You can see our windows, the sun is coming in here and warming our house up, and also just getting us some sunshine in the wintertime. So this is, uh, again, the south side of our house. This is the sun space of our house. It's unconditioned except for the, the heat that we get through the door that comes into this area and also the sunshine. It heats it up and you can see we're growing some stuff in here. Right now it's kind of a, a plant room, but eventually we're going to start growing other things that we can eat. There's some herbs over there. Oh, and a hose. In a tree. Still on the first, first floor, but now on the north side of the house, and you notice what we did on the north side of the house is we put all of our non active living spaces here. Um, we have a stairway, we have a closet over here, and then if we're moving down the hall, we have a bathroom again, something that's not an active living space, and then finally an office, and we put our office down there because we figured we're on the computer anyways, and it's not a good idea to have a bunch of sunshine shining at you while you're working on the computer. So we tried to move all of our non-active living spaces and things that didn't need kind of natural ambient light to the back side of the house. Now we're on the second floor, and again, the same ideas. Over to my left, which is the north side of the house, we have a stairway, we have our laundry, um, things that, again, that we don't, that don't need any natural light or kind of non-active living spaces. Over here on the right, we have our bedrooms. And so the bedrooms get nice and sunny in the morning when it's sunny and wakes you up, and also it warms the bedrooms up for later on in the evening. Mm -hmm. So this is above the sun space, but again, the same idea as the sun space below. We don't actually have a, a, a title for this room yet or a name, but it's really nice on a January afternoon when you've kind of been cooped up 
in the winter to sit out here and, and get all the sunshine through the windows. So another thing that we did with our home to make it energy efficient was uh, a lot of insulation. So our walls were not 2x4 walls, but in fact 2x6 wall construction. And then we also used closed cell spray foam, which actually seals the house and makes it airtight. And so if you seal your house and make it airtight, you need to turn the air over in the house. It actually would become dangerous if we just left our house and shut the door like a normal house. Um, you wouldn't get enough air turnover in the house. So what we had to also install in our house was an air exchanger. And so this, this unit right here, what this does is it turns the air over in the house and it does that in an efficient way. What it does is it actually has a heat exchanger inside of here so when it pulls the air from the outside while it's exhausting the air from the inside, that air passes through a heat exchanger where the cold air from the outside gets warmed up by the air that we're exhausting out. And so this thing is actually like 95% uh, percent efficient at changing the heat from the inside temperature from the outside temperature. So that way when it's blowing the air into our house, it's closer to the temperature of the house as opposed to the 10 or 12 degrees that it is outside. Okay, so we have a, a traditional forced air furnace, actually an efficient one, whatever the most efficient forced air furnace that we could get. Um, another thing that we did because we wanted to use renewable fuels was we purchased a, um, a pellet furnace. So it acts as an add-on furnace and right behind me here is the pellet furnace and uh, so far the pellet furnace has turned out to be a mistake. <laughs> um, the pellets actually cost us quite a bit more than the, um, the natural gas that we can use in the furnace and also the pellet furnace itself is not nearly as efficient. The blower and things like that in the furnace itself use a lot of electricity and don't efficiently circulate the air through the house. So we're up till now we haven't really been using the pellet furnace that much. We tried it out and then found out that it was not working nearly as well as our regular forced air furnace. So that was kind of a mistake. So another feature was we used a tankless hot water heater and one of the problems with a tankless hot water heater sometimes is it takes a while for the hot water to get up to the faucet when you turn it on. So what we also did is we installed a, um, a PEX system, a PEX manifold system, which gets the uh, water to the source a lot faster. So you'll notice that the water comes out, let's say it's coming out of our hot water heat here, it goes right into this manifold and instead of having to traveling through a lot of plumbing to make it to the source, it goes directly from the manifold and each of these lines goes to the, the faucet wherever it is. So for example, this one is the bath, the lavatory upstairs for the bathroom so that when we turn the hot water on, it just travels around in the manifold and goes directly up to the bathroom very quickly so that we're not using a lot of water, wasting a lot of water trying to get the hot water up to our source. Manifold makes it also really easy when you have to work on plumbing because you can just come down here and turn the water off to any appliance or anything in the house, any spigot in the house, and go work on it. It's actually really handy.